Good evening, how are you? Um, RES is very proud to announce that our enrollment is back up to 752 students. Um, we will possibly have two more students by the end of the week. We have a family that has returned to our area and they're thinking about bringing their nieces and nephew up from Lancaster. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we'll be able to squeeze them in before the end of this calendar year. Um, we held our award assembly this month at the beginning at the, on December 2nd to recognize our November Students of the Month. We are very uh, proud to recognize our students who excel not only academically, but with their citizenship. It's something that we're working on to um, help our kids be nicer to each other. We also have such color blue slips, which are given out to students who are caught being good. Um, so we have the um, yard supervisors, we have our paraeducators, teachers, when they're walking around, if they see a student who does something that's gone above and beyond, we want to recognize them. So they give them a blue slip and then they recognize the student of the month. Um, an example is I was walking through campus and I dropped, I dropped a bunch of papers and this one little boy just stopped playing, ran over, helped me pick everything up, handed them to me, and then ran back and kept on playing. <laughs> and didn't give it a second thought. And then he was really surprised when he got a blue slip, and he just, you know, he just looked at me and said, well, I said, you stopped playing when you, you know, during your recess time to help me out. I said, I appreciate that. So all the other kids are like, now they're watching as I walk across the campus. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of these times, if I'm going to get tripped, and then I'll get an inclusive for that. <laughs> but I do want to see you in my office for tripping the principal. So we're very you know, happy to recognize those kids. Um, our attendance has remained constant in spite of several bouts with the stomach flu and our cold weather conditions. I'm also very happy to report that our teachers have very good attendance. I understand that usually when the weather gets cold, uh, some teachers get you know, snowed into atrophy, but our attendance rate is very, very good. It's very, very high. We've seen almost no absenteeism this winter. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed it goes all the way through the rest of the winter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Our computer lab is progressing really well. We're working closely with Mr. Wexler and Mr. Rob Nett. Uh, today, the UPS guy pulled up and he delivered all of our chairs. We don't have our computer tables yet, but we have a lot of chairs. So step one, we're looking good. Our estimated time to open, or our grand opening, is going to be on January 20th, 2014. Um, once we finalize that date, of course, we're going to send out invitations. We're going to make a big deal about it, you know, have balloons. You know, have a ribbon cutting ceremony of the whole nine yards. We want the kids really fired up about this. Um, also, our students, we continue to see a change in our office in the number of referrals. Um, compared to last year, the number of referrals or number of suspensions of kids in the office has been reduced. Um, again, I'm going to attribute that, a big part of that, to our Safe School Ambassadors, which is a program that we work with Safe Park, I mean, with, with Safe Park, with West Park, because um, the kids are out there, and they're responding and they're stepping up and they're really jumping in and it's kind of funny to hear you know, some of the kids talking to a first grader and saying, okay, when you did this, what were you thinking? How were you feeling? And you, and you have these little kids that are going, I was really mad and you go, well, why? And it's just a really fun conversation to hear because they actually think it through. So now you have kids who are actually thinking before they throw a punch, which is a great, great thing for us to see. So we're very excited about that. Also, our state school ambassadors in conjunction again with West Park, attended a leadership conference last week. Um, and some of the comments that the kids brought back is it was weird to be taken out of their comfort zone. Um, they actually got to experience what a victim of bullying might feel like when they had no one to turn to. So they were made to feel that way, and then they had the other half where now you get to go and tell somebody and you get to help you resolve that problem so you're not feeling so helpless. Um, what makes this program so good is some of the kids that we have as CSCO ambassadors were some of our tougher, uh, borderline discipline problems, and they never got to see it from the other side of the table, for lack of a better word. So they came back and they said, wow, I, I never realized how helpless a bully felt. I mean, I mean, a victim felt when, when somebody was getting bullied, which was you know, really, really exciting to hear. Um, another comment was, you know, this taught me that everyone is different, and unless you give people a chance, you could, you could be missing out on knowing people with great talents, and we should never judge someone just by how they look. And that, again, is, was a great statement. And again, it was by a student who, in previous times, based on history, had spent a lot of time in the office, you know, having numerous conversations with administrators. So this was a great perspective. And again, it was just all brought out to this leadership uh, conference, leadership meeting, 
that helped our safe school ambassadors not only develop their leadership skills, but to have a better understanding of what the kids who are victims or the kids who felt that they were helpless, um, how they felt, so now it gives them a better perspective when they're talking to you know, alleged bullies or victims of an incident. Our kindergarten and first grade classes are held with holiday performances for our parents on Monday, December 16th for our kindergarten parents and on Tuesday, December 17th for our first grade parents. Both uh, performances, the cafeteria was completely packed, so uh, we had a very good attendance by our parents. They also did a performance today for our um, second and third, second through fifth grade students, so everybody got to enjoy the performance. It was fabulous. Our Angel Tree uh, this school year was able to donate to 35 needy children from our school. Each uh, student received a toy, socks, a sweatshirt, two books, and a stocking full of stuff. And I'm sure some other items that I have forgotten to include. You couldn't remember what was in there. Um, additionally, each family received a family game and a popcorn game. Items to the Angel Tree students were provided by the Rosemont Car Club, uh, West Park staff members, and the West Park PTO. Our families were also uh, were able to pick up the items, and, and or they've been delivered to them, and each family has been extremely grateful from the support of our school and our community um, that we've provided for them. Uh, our Kern County Sheriff Department also donated turkeys to two of our families, which um, the families also greatly appreciated. West Park was also um, collecting pajamas for the Scholastic Pajama Drive. Um, we were able to donate 66 pairs of pajamas to uh, that event, which means that 66 needy boys and girls were able to receive a pair of pajamas and a book to help them have a good night's sleep. Our staff Christmas party will be tomorrow at 11.30 in our cafeteria. We're having lunch catered by Marie Callender's with turkey ham and all the trimmings, and I know our staff's really looking forward to that. Our Student of the Month Awards for December will be held on Monday, January 6th at 7.30 a.m. Two of our students from each class will be chosen for showing our value for December, which was to be on time and prepared to work, as well as for showing all of the values that we've learned in all of our previous months of the school year. Our school site council meeting will be held on Monday, January 13th at 3 o'clock, and our PTO will be having their next meeting on Monday, January 13th at 3.30, so I get to go from one really quickly to the next. It's really fun. Our next PTO event will be our second annual uh, Student Parent Sweetheart Ball, which will be held in February. Um, last year was absolutely fabulous, and I can only expect for it to even have a, a much larger turnout than we did last year, so I'm really looking forward to that. The date hasn't yet been determined, but as soon as it does, I'll make sure that you guys uh, get to hear about it, because we'd love to have you come out and join us. Our PTO also held a holiday shop. Um, that was provided for our students to purchase little presents for their family and friends. Um, and our PTO was able to make a profit of a little less than $1,400 just from the holiday shop, which is a pretty good amount for something like that. Our report cards will be sent home on Friday, January 10th. Um, and our GATE students are going on a field trip to the Getty Museum on Tuesday, January 14th. Ten of our West Park students participated in the Regional, regional Oral Language Festival in Tehachapi at the BK Theater on Thursday, December 12th. All of our participants did an absolutely fabulous job. Our humorous soloist, Andrew Coombs, the, and our humorous duo, Sky Siegel and Kirsten Padilla, placed first in the regional competition and will be moving on to the Kern County competition in January. Andrew performed I Love You, Stinky Face by Lisa McCourt, um, and he is, uh, you have to watch him, he's just amazing, and I guess you guys probably will get to, because I'm sure he'll come here and show you how amazing he is at our next uh, time we uh, West Park gets to perform for you. Andrew, um, and then Kirsten and Sky performed Weird Parents by Audrey Wood. And I'm, I know they're very excited about getting to go to the Bakersfield competition. Our first semester awards assemblies will be held on Tuesday, January 1st for kindergarten at 8 a.m. and for first grade at 8.45. And then Wednesday, January 22nd will be second grade at 8 and third grade at 8.45. Thursday, January 23rd will be our fourth grade at 8 a.m. and our fifth grade at 8.45. And I, too, wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, um, and I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Um, our discipline committee, Mr. Brundell and Ms. Adams, have been really active in our, dis our discipline and safety committee. Uh, they've actually gone into our containers and um, dug through all that and are creating a list of what we need for our emergency supplies. Our technology committee, uh, we have none of our sixth grade students, families, opted out of our one-on-one -on -one devices for uh, Mr. Dan Murrow's classroom. I have to give really good kudos to Dan uh, Wexler, 
and the IT team, they've been uh, working really, really hard ensuring that the devices are good to go, uh, that they meet with the parents, answering questions. I mean, Dan has been at our school practically every day, making sure that all the you know, bugs in the system get worked out. Um, the parents were pretty excited about having the one-on-one -on -one devices, so I think that's uh, going really well uh, for us. Our SST committee continues to meet, working with our students. Uh, we have uh, approximately eight students now in our SST. Uh, that's our student uh, survey team. Our ASB, uh, they are working on our winter dance, which is coming up in, in January. Our attendance, uh, again, still continues to be high. We're getting uh, our pizzas and our donuts awarded to our, our students. Um, it, it's just really incredible. Uh, a lot of our teachers keep obviously track of all the perfect attendances. Uh, so ASB has to constantly vote every Monday to approve funding for the donuts and for the pizza, and it's really, really good. Um, and the kids are really uh, are enjoying that. Um, our leadership uh, has met, uh, and we are now looking at uh, our master for next school year. Uh, we want to make sure that we get our leg up on that so that we can get those uh, kinks worked out. Um, tropical sports, uh, our basketball team, our boys, eighth grade, have uh, won their last two games, uh, which is really fantastic for the first time that our team is getting together. Um, our coaches are doing a great job, course the reader as well, uh, getting the, our sports program off the ground. Uh, today we had our after school program, uh, last board meeting, or two board meetings ago, they uh, sang here for us. Today we had a full on presentation for our after school music program, uh, which went really well. Um, academic. Uh, Performance report, uh, we are still working with uh, our Common Core. Um, we've sort of decided at Tropico um, that we are going to start working on our hands-on, actually doing the practice of developing our lesson plans and having the teachers work in developing uh, the lesson plans and working with the tools. So we started doing that last Wednesday, and we will probably start focusing more on that as well as developing our Common Core. So with that said, uh, Wish everybody great holidays, and uh, we'll see you next year. Uh, enrollment presently at Rare Earth High School is 65. Abraham Lincoln, we have 116 signed contracts. Placement, six students will be moving from Abraham Lincoln at the semester, as you all are aware. These are the suspended expulsions that have been reinstated to their traditional site. Three of the students will be returning to Tropico, and three will be reinstated to Rare Earth High School. With the reinstatements to Rare Earth High School, our numbers will increase to 68. I currently have two out of district wanting to return to district requests, which I'll act upon the first week in the semester. <coughs> that will put Rare Earth at 70, which will put us at max because of the computer stations themselves. Um, at that point, it, it becomes a numbers game. I, we graduate one, I take another one in. We graduate one, we take another one in. Abraham Lincoln is also reaching capacity. So then we begin, begin to look at whether or not we're gonna hire another teacher or whether or not we get people to do uh, part-time or overtime or whether or not we just call it full. <clears throat> so it's, it's a constant numbers game at this point in the year of keeping it uh, balanced. One student from Tropico Middle School will be joining us at the start of second semester. And then as I've already gone over with the transfers, uh, one rare earth student will be transferring back to the high school, which really, that's what we work for, hopefully, to see them to go back to the traditional setting. He came to us behind on credits. He's caught up. He wants to return because he wants to play soccer and he wants to be in the ROTC program because his ultimate goal is the military and so he wants three years of ROTC on his transcript. So he was able to do that. Abraham Lincoln has two students transferring back to the high school. Both of these students have completed their requirements for transfers, and we had the conferences, and they both have decided that they want to return to the high school. So we do have success stories, and we're proud of these students and what they were able to accomplish. Abraham Lincoln had one request for transfer, and that one was denied. Graduations, Rare Earth is leading the numbers. They have two more graduates this month. So they have a total of four, and Abraham Lincoln has a total of two. 
Events, our first quarter awards assembly was held on December 5th. 11 students had attendance of 95% or better, and two of those students had 100% attendance. Four students were recognized for GPAs of 3.0 or better. We did have a few parents, about six, uh, join us, and then the, those who were honored and their families were invited to stay for donuts. The Saturday administration of the CASI was on December 7th and December 14th. We worked in correlation with the high school so that both those Saturdays were covered either by our staff or by someone from the high school. And those students who had not yet passed it as 12th graders or they have formally been in our adult program could return to take the test. The computer labs, I did a real quick evaluation with the teachers asking them how they felt it went over the year or the semester and they were all really pleased with the amount of students that did use the afternoon labs. And um, if a student chose to come every day for the three days it's open, that was an additional three hours and 45 minutes per week that they were on the computer. And that allowed them to either work on a subject beyond what they were already working on or work on their current ones and get it done quicker. Uh, we, we're going to continue with it, of course, but we're really going to promote it second semester and try to get all of the students to, to take advantage of at least one day a week. Even that could make a difference in getting their credits made up. Our staff, uh, we're closing out the semester like everybody else. It's a little bit of a different game in alternative education. The paperwork that's involved, the, the number of subjects and students that a teacher has to account for. So we've already started it. We started it two weeks ago, so that hopefully when the students return on January 6th, we go right into second semester without any glitches. We've had a few festive occasions the past two weeks in the holiday spirit, and as always, food and good company are always a good combination. Um, I want to thank the Alted staff again. Um, I've been in Alted in some capacity for 20 years, and no, no two years are ever the same. There's always changes, there's always uh, different things going on, but this staff this year, we had a lot, and they were very obliging with it and very cooperative. Um, seeing some resistance for the Common Core, but I think overall, they're on board with it, and they're going to be visiting other schools and see how they're doing it. So from all of us to all of you, thank you for your support for a successful semester. Happy holidays, and see you in the new year. At present, Rosemont High School stands with 772 students with a attendance rate as of yesterday at 94.5. Um, actually, in that package that we got passed around, um, I actually had the privilege today of going into Mr. Alvarez's uh, Spanish 2 class. And quite frankly, I was really impressed because um, in with the Common Core, it's called depth of knowledge for assessment protocols and trying to think out of the box uh, as to better ways of examining assessment because this is where we're trying to get to, kids being able to cognitively think and make a decision or answer a problem situation. Um, instead of using the old Scantron system, he brought out puppets. Normally you wouldn't see something like this at the high school situation, <laughs> but um, he got these all of his entire classes and actually they were ecstatic as you can see in the picture. But they presented all different fables, and the picture below shows the three little pigs. As you can see the, the wolf about to eat them, pretty much. And they presented in Spanish. And it got rid of that little fear factor because they're not seeing them behind the curtain. But I just loved it. And our, stat, our front office went in to watch it, and I stayed a little bit longer, and we took pictures, and it was great. And that's really thinking out of the box, and that's a new style of assessment, and thinking of different styles. And so that's a good thing, and we're going forward with that. So there's that. Uh, for the next section, uh, let's see, off to section number four. I'm going to quickly jump over. Uh, the counseling is monitoring. I know I'm jumping back and forth, but I apologize. There's reason my madness. We're currently monitoring what's going on for our student course schedules and proper A through G alignment. We want to increase our A through G um, and how many students um, take the classes that are necessary, whether if they want to go to a Cal State or CSU or not. You see, um, it's really seeing the tracks that they want to go to. We believe our numbers are kind of small in the past, and that's something we're going to be focusing on. In addition to that, we're looking at lead away or um, PLTW, however you want to see it. Um, in other words, that and on top of that, our STEM programs are science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. These are some things that will get uh, Rosamond out in the more public. And speaking of that, um, we already went over it. Thank you to Tristan for going over section six. Our special projects that we're looking at is we're aligning ourselves more to the colleges. Through collaboration with uh, one of our teacher, Debbie Keyes, we've had a recent visit, or actually we went and visited, AV College with President Ed Kometzing, and that was a great, promising 
uh, possible future that we might hope in our uh, possible upcoming years. Um, we're looking at that in kind of enrollment, we're looking at goal enrollment, we're looking at articulation, and it, um, it's, it's pretty much liking what we're doing. Um, we appreciate all the efforts of the district office and as well as the, the high school itself. In addition to that, we've recently had a visit from uh, Ed, uh, Bob Johnson from UCA or Eastern Current Community Alliance and the STEM Network lead for that. Um, they're looking at Rosemont High School as being a showcase uh, right around the February <coughs> time frame, and they'll have tours coming to our site and another site, but uh, mainly with uh, um, us standing out and showing. And they'll have some public figures and some of the people for that. So, in essence, we appreciate what's going on. We appreciate the the assistance that we're getting from the district staff. The staff is wonderful. We thank the board for what you're allowing us to do, and we're definitely looking forward to it. Any questions? Keys for the year we're with the developer fees, and we uh, essentially gained $1.3 million uh, at expenditures of, uh, where did we go to stand? Expenditures of 180000 and so we end up with approximately $2 million left over in the uh, that's great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh because I was just, you know, wow. quick question. Yes. Um, kind of like part of it. Uh, uh, once a year we have to approve the, like, the name of that settlement is, but we have to keep money aside because of the lawsuit for the revenues from the oil wells that has not been settled in 12 years. I'll say no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> settlement done. It was done? In Bakersfield, yeah. The county settled. And they have a settlement agreement. And so we no longer have to do that one. Thank you. So, and then the uh, second thing is on the settlement, the developer fees, $1,058,000 of development fees were actually recovery fees from Cal EMA. So, so that's part of the total. That goes into fund 25. And the other, other funds in 25, the $300,000 is for the actual developer fees, which are paid by the developers, <coughs> first growth foot, and commercial properties, as well as um, our uh, homeowners who build over 1,500 square feet, or not even not five, 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 oh, 500 square feet for everything above that they have to pay per square foot. So the new houses that are being built. Yes. So right now they're being um, built. Yeah. So the developer fees before also. they were allowed to, you know, start their stick building, they had to get their they had to pony up money. And our development fees are at. And that's the, the max of where that is. And that's already, in, and that, that's actually the county collects those fees for us. So when they go to pay their licenses at the county, the county is already, you know, collects that, and then we get that transferred in. So it was a little over three hundred thousand dollars here, a million fifty-eight thousand in the recovery. So that's what gave us well over a million dollar profit in our um, fund twenty-five. I'm motion that we approve resolution thirteen fourteen fourteen. All right, motion by Mr. Stark. Second. Mr. Gutierrez. All in favor? The possibility of, of doing a placement of approximately $2.5 million in our bond uh, measure H bonds in order to maintain our hardship, as well as we do have projects going on that we can that this can help us fund. Um, and it, we've been uh, educating the board in a lot of different ways. One is uh, about our increase in valuation of our assets in the district. And then last week, uh, Mr. Green came and, and it did a more detailed explanation of, of why those um, assets went up so much. And really a, a very good presentation on the, the wind farms and the, the solar farms and what that actually means to us and our tax players and how that diversifies our, our tax base. Um, we have today from Caldwell Flores Winters, uh, Mr. John um, Greenlee, and he's going to talk a little bit about how we're going to go about um, taking the uh, 2.5 million and placing them in the advantages of doing it this way uh, for the um, district. I'm with uh, CFW, Caldwell Flores Winters. Uh, I am one of the newer members to the team. Uh, I am a managing director and I do run the financial advisory unit with, within uh, uh, CFW. Uh, so I may be new to CFW, but I've been in the business a long time and uh, here in California uh, working in, in banks and investment banks and doing uh, uh, financial advisory. So I know the California market and I know the private placement market in particular, what I'll be talking about today. Um, uh, when we had been meeting with uh, your staff in the last uh, month or so, uh, it came up and he, last week, I think you got a real good flavor for 
uh, the fact that uh, the hardship situation because you had a really great thing happen. And so having the increase in AVs is, is a good thing. Uh, along with that came kind of this uh, situation where you, we want to keep it in hardship. Uh, but you do have the borrowing needs, so this could be a good way to do it. And it just so happened that uh, when I joined CFW, uh, one of the uh, things I wanted to bring to, to the basket of, of products that we sell is the, is the private placement, because that's the world that I come from. And so uh, luckily these things kind of came together at the same time and we came up right here with a good opportunity that's going to fit what you need. And I want to make sure I answer all your questions and tell you how it's doing because it's, it's really similar to all the financing you've done before, but just a, a few little twists to it. So if we go to the, the next page here, um, and I did have a handout for you. Is there, is there, one you? there you go, perfect, thank you. <clears throat> um, the description of the transaction, as you know, is about 2.5 million. What we put into the resolution is it not to exceed three, just in case sizing comes in a little bit different. Um, it's going to be a general obligation bond, just like the bonds that have been a voter approved. No change to that. Uh, the method of sale is what's a little bit different. The uh, sales that you've had before, the one we call kind of just public sales, where you go out to, to the marketplace and you do these negotiated sales with a variety of buyers through an underwriter. Uh, in this case, we're doing what we call a private placement direct bank purchase. And I think this is the real difference and something I want to just spend a little time on. A direct bank purchase or a private placement is something that's been used uh, in the past in a variety of ways, but it's become uh, in favor in the last few years because a lot of banks have really excess profits. They're doing very, very well. And what they do uh, now is rather than issue letters of credit uh, or loans, they're just buying these bonds directly. And what they do is they buy them at a tax exempt rate and they get tax incentives to do it. So what they do is they are doing a calculation where they're buying those bonds and they're giving it to you like it's 67% of prime is a good way to kind of tell you what it is. But what they're doing is they're actually beating the market rate that you go out for, for an A plus credit like yourselves. So they're being able to buy these bonds, hold them in their portfolio and given the kind of tax breaks, and again, this is a little bit of an extension of what happened through the downturn and all of the changes and the incentives that the federal governments have been putting in state level to kind of uh, get the economy moving and going. Um, so they're buying these bonds and they're giving really, really attractive rates. Um, what you have then is the term, because it's going to be a smaller amount, they don't have to go out for 30 years. And the uh, bank market likes to buy things in the 7 to 10 year frame. The market usually buys them for 30 years, but since you were only going to do a smaller mo amount, you can find a 7 to uh, 10 year period. So that fits into your tax structure, as well as fits the bank's market, and then it fits the dollar that you need. So it's kind of like I said, it's a perfect combination of events here. The estimated interest rates that we are currently seeing in the market, and we did have one sort of indicative rate come in, and I'll explain to you kind of what that, what that is, is somewhere in between the 2 to 4% range. That's interest cost, your borrowing cost. Um, and that actual number is going to really come down when we actually find the buyer and we find out what term, whether we do 7 or 10. And I'm going to give you an example. Last week, we closed a transaction for a school district in Imperial County. It's A-plus rated. I think it has a lot of similar characteristics as this school district. Uh, they have geothermal, you have wind. Uh, they have sort of the same situation. It was a little larger transaction. Uh, but again, I think you can use that as a comparison. Uh, they went out and they did a much larger transaction. It was about uh, 15 million. But they had serial bonds, and they had bonds that were 7 and 10 years due. The rates they got were for 7 year about 2.7 and a 10-year at about 3.7. For your specific credit uh, that we were uh, had uh, put in front of a, a bank uh, here in the last few weeks, we had uh, on a seven-year approximately 1.9%, so a savings of around 80 basis points, and about 2.5 uh, on a 10-year. Uh, and again, those are indicative rates, but again, that's almost a, a full 1% savings. 
Uh, a lot of these banks, uh, and this bank in particular, I can tell you, was uh, the Bank of the West. Uh, they uh, have uh, a new public finance department. Um, and again, it's all kind of about who you know. I have been in the banking business forever, gentleman there. Uh, I know he wants to grow his assets. They have opened offices in, in, in Los Angeles and hired new people. And so it's getting this credit in front of them and having them look at it, having them understand the credit. So what we do is we talk to them and we are going to explain your story. Your story is a very good one. And that's where uh, we're able to, I think, uh, uh, secure uh, what we call under-market pricing. We know, as we talk to all of our clients, especially going into this new year, is that there is Assembly Bill 182, AB 182, which has been uh, uh, put forth and is effective uh, the 1st of January. And that's a very important bill. It's really to make sure that the school districts uh, uh, don't get into any trouble and issue debt that's outside the norm. So what we want to make sure that we tell you is that this is going to be AB 182 compliant. So there's not going to be anything new, uh, unique, odd, out of the ordinary, uh, and that your uh, finances are going to be done that's going to be something that's going to make you sleep at night and you don't have to worry about anything. And here are the primary components of one, one, AB 182. That is, you can't have terms longer than 30 years. Uh, uh, school districts going up long. Obviously, these are short, shorter term. That's not going to be a problem. Interest rates have to be below 8%. You're going to be well below that. Uh, repayment ratio always has to be less than 4 to 1. That is the total amount that you end up paying to the actual amount that you borrowed. Uh, I'm going to say right now that your repayment ratio is probably going to come in probably about 1.5 to 1. Much lower than that. Um, and again, if they're going to be what we call SIBs, or just current interest rate bonds, traditional, plain vanilla stuff, and there's not going to be any, what they, it's kind of a dirty word now, CAVs, capital appreciation bonds, nothing like that. And so our role as your financial advisor is to make sure that, that uh, all of this is, is done according to regulation. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing as your financial advisor is getting the best rate for you, the best structure, and uh, uh, putting it all together for you. Um, right now, very competitive environment. And again, the advantage of doing this at this current time for you is that they're uh, negotiated. The, the rates are going to be a little bit lower than the prevailing open market rates. Okay? It's because of the advantages that these banks can have in holding these bonds in their own portfolio. Uh, gives you a lot of structuring and the flexibility of it. So we're going to negotiate with that bank when you have what we call call provisions so that you're not stuck with the debt if you ended up wanting to refinance it. When we do a, a larger geo deal in the future, you'll be able to do that. You don't need to go to the credit rating agency process, so there's no fees there. You don't need insurance because you have the buyer and it's already lined up. There's not an official statement that has to be made. That is usually takes a lot, a lot of the lion's share of the cost sometimes. So in this case, since it's not being publicly traded, it's being held by one, you don't need to do that. We think there's substantially less uh, staff time involved, and so uh, there are just overall reductions in the cost of issuance, and that, again, makes it, makes it attractive to you. Contact, if you're doing this, I am really the fiduciary to you. We sign... Uh, <coughs> certificates at closing indicating that every decision that we make and what we do has your best interest uh, at heart. Um, my background, again, I have worked with banks. Uh, I've worked with Don Hunt, who will be bond counsel uh, for many years. So I know this industry quite well, and uh, uh, I will make sure that uh, the structure that you get is, is going to be the best one out there. Um, whenever you have this, you have to have a placement agent. They assist in helping us. Stiefel Nicholas uh, is now, used to be Stone and Youngberg, one of the largest investment banks here, uh, based out of uh, uh, San Francisco. John Barrisey, he's the managing director. Uh, he's going to make sure that they're all written to the, uh, the letter of the law. And he also does help us make sure that we have the correct market data. Um, their role is really the duty to the, to the investors. Uh, and that just would be one investor. But it also allows us to have really good market data, which is important. Uh, lastly, uh, Fulbright Jaworski. Uh, they have uh, worked with you before. Uh, Don Hunt uh, will be bond counsel. 
uh, and again, many, many years in here, and he has come to you ensuring that this is done to your prior bond measures and that everything, again, is, is, is done correctly. Uh, Fulbright Jaworski is one of the largest public finance attorney firms based out of, of uh, uh, Houston, large office here, and they have recently had a merger with Norton Rose, which is a global firm. So again, they would meet all the criteria of being a, what I call a very good counterparty uh, in this transaction. So um, we're having some negotiations. I don't know if it'll happen because of the holiday season, um, but it, it can be accomplished in 45 days. <coughs> I think this is important. Time is of the essence because we want to make sure that uh, as far as the hardship uh, ratios that are involved here, that, you, that if they're retroactive, that you're in check so that you don't lose any of those important state aid dollars. Um, so what we do is we uh, approve the resolution of which was prepared by Don Hunt at Fulbright. Um, we will then go out uh, and they'd be establishing the bond terms and rate at the end, identifying the actual banks. Uh, we had a few of them that gave us really good rates that said, hey, I'm going you know, off for the holidays. So uh, rather than pick a bank that may have a little bit higher rate and close sooner, we want to make sure that we get the good rates. So that's why we have a little bit of a window there. Uh, once we do, we finalize the documents, obtain final credit approval, close the transaction, and receive your funds. Um, and this can all happen within 45 days. Uh, this could, and I would anticipate that we could, would have a February 1st close. Uh, if you have an open market sale, uh, you know, it could take up to, uh, you know, 60, 90 days. It's probably a little more, more common. Um, and again, we think time is of the essence because we want to make sure that you don't put yourself in a position with your more improved AVs, assessed valuations, that you lose opportunities that really, you know, are due you. Um, and that's, that's it. I am here to answer any questions that you may have. Regular schedule is to schedule student hearings and trustee study sessions um, on the second Wednesday of the month. So the first Monday would be uh, regular meeting, second Wednesday would be for student hearings and study sessions, and uh, third Wednesday again would be the regular meeting like we currently have. Um, and so I would ask the board to approve that schedule. I like that August 6th, so that'll be my 58th birthday. Uh, unless you have any ideas, please let me know. Um, um, I uh, make a motion to approve the calendar to set forth on the back page. And that would be Mr. Gutierrez. And did you second that, Ms. Kirk? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a motion for a I would. She already did. Um, <laughs> Mm. Well, I got to put on my glasses and wish everybody a happy new year. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not done. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so uh, that was at uh, 8.15. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, John. I'm going to put my 49er hat on. There we go. Everybody have a wonderful Christmas and a happy New Year's.